With apologies, that introduces the stars of Uncle Vanya, uh, Toby Jones and Richard Armitage. Uh, good morning. Good morning, hi. How does that introduce us? Because yeah, it was called Uncle Sam. The word uncle appeared in it. Oh, my goodness. Ah. All what right. a great link. Well, thank you. you know, look, it, it's not much of one, but it's a big one. <laughs> uncle Sam. You know. You tried finding a pop song with Vanya in the title. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My old man said, follow the Vanya. But, uh, no, that would actually that would be rather good. That would have been quite good, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, welcome, boys. Uh, uh, Toby Jones, Richard Armitage. So, uh, who plays who? Richard I, Armitage. I'm playing Asroff. The Doctor. The doctor. And inevitably, I play Uncle Vanya. Right. And if people have never come across this play before, and it's one of those weird things because I was saying, you know, I did it in drama school, and you feel like people, because it's one of those plays that revives a lot. So you always imagine that people do know the story. Yes. yes. But yet you must get an audience who are going gasping and going, oh no, they don't know what's happening. So uh, how do you pitch it to people? We've agreed that Toby's going to answer this question. <laughs> yes, you did agree that. Uh, it's about a man called Uncle it's- Vanya. <laughs> Made by me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, essentially, it's um, a love story. I think on one level, it's uh, uh, but it's 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 unfulfilled love. A lot of it. Uh, it's but there's a lot of yearning in it because it's Russian. But uh, I, I I think the way that Ian Rickson, who who's directed it. Uh, the way he's staged it, I think that he's made it very, very accessible. He has it, is, it isn't sort of, you know, th- th- that traditional Russian, slightly costume drama, slightly staid thing. It feels very quick, for one thing, and very direct. And Conor McPherson's adaptation has sort of stripped away a lot of the stuff that holds the play up. But the, the, the love story and the yearning remains, but people can't believe quite how quick the show is it's like an hour each half which is which wow is, yeah and when you when you're doing this the the adaptation by connor do uh, did you go back to see other translations or other adaptations to kind of see how it compares yeah. Yeah, we did we had the literal translation on the table with connor's version and connor in the room so uh, we could always refer back to what the russian uh, the, you know the original Russian, and say, oh, it's a bit saying. of a shame. Bit of a shame we missed this. Piece. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you know things that were that you were were missing that that Connor had deliberately left out. But it, it, he was really flexible with with everything. Totally. He wanted it to be as close to the original, but at the same time resonate for a modern ear. Yeah. And it's interesting, isn't it? I always think because he's you know obviously he's an incredibly successful writer. Yeah. And da, da, da. So to to do this, it, it. I wonder what what was he asked to do it or yeah yeah in in. Spoke to me and said, oh, uh, "I'm going to get. Uh, we've, got, we've got to find a, a, a trans, uh, someone to, who's going to do the translation. Effectively, an adaptation, really, not a translation, because that's been done." So uh, he said, uh, "We've got Connor to do it," and I said, "Oh, that, that's sort of inspired because there's often a link between Irish drama, Brian Friel and Chekhov." Yeah, yeah. And I think the interest for a dramatist, Chekhov, is so mysterious because nothing happens, but loads happens. And the engineering of that, getting inside the engine of how that happens in a play, I think is fascinating for a playwright because they go, how did Chekhov achieve these this effect? Which is what people always come out feeling. They go, I've sort of been through the mill, but it, but what has actually changed? Yeah. You know? yeah. And it, and, it, and I, th- I think that, that for Connor, that's where his interest lies. But also I think the humour, because... Chekhov called them comedies, and I think the other thing that surprised people is, is how funny the play is. Yeah, oh, there are a lot of laughs in... Yeah. In, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and now, I, I should know, but I don't, so I'm asking no, no, you. Else, and, else. and if you don't know, you're really in trouble. Uh, who plays Sonia and Yelena? And is Amy it, Lou Wood plays Sonia, um, uh, my niece, as it were. So, in a way, you could say the lead character, because it's called Uncle Vanya. Uh, uh and she, people will know her from sex education, I think. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah, yeah, And actually, I have to say, she... I mean, her character is the heartbreaking yes. one. I mean, that's... Yeah. It's, well, she's yeah. the future. She's the, the youth, you know, uh, who's sort of like all of these dysfunctional adults all around her. And she's the one who's sort of... The one who points, is there any future for one this country? And the truth is, of course, the revolution around the corner, so not really, no. <laughs> yeah, sauce about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting, like, t- t- times in my life where I felt kind of a, a loose end or in, in moments of despair, I've actually gone back to Chekhov and looked at, uh, at Sonia's last speech because it contains really the kind of whole essence of the players, who who are we without our work, and we're, we're sort of nothing, and that's what Vanya's facing. He's facing becoming nobody after years of toil and and Sonia really sums it up and kind of 
props you up at the end of mm. the play and props the audience up as well. So. But it's funny, because that last speech, it can go... You can kind of play it any way you want, yeah. in a way. You know, it can be it can be uplifting or it could be just yes. hideous. Yeah. Just gonna keep working. Yeah. Gonna keep working. Thankfully, That's we've it. gone for the yeah. former, yeah. For the yeah. former yeah. reading. It's the West yeah. End, darling. It's the West End. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, um, and actually, I mean, isn't it great, though, here we are in 2020, that, you know, Chekhov is in the commercial theatre. He's not in a subsidised art house somewhere. He's you know, in the West End. That's yeah. kind of amazing. Yeah, I think people are often asking us, so what's your day off, assuming it's on at the National? Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. when, when's your day off? <laughs> There's no day off. Yeah. And we are playing, we're playing to really kind of healthy capacity houses as well, you know, and there's, after the play, a lot of the um, people that see it kind of think that certain things have been crowbarred in for the modern ear. Like a lot of the the philosophy and vision that, that Astrov talks about is is rooted in, in environmentalism and they think, oh, Conor McPherson kind of shoved that in because it's relevant now, but actually it was written 120 years ago and it's there in the original translations. It's yeah. kind of incredible. Um, we should say, if people want to say, it's at the Harold Pinter Theatre. It's there until uh, May the 2nd. Um, the other thing I think is really striking about this production is the design. It looks so beautiful. I mean, it's so kind of, it's like a painting. It's just mm. gorgeous. Yeah. I've never seen it, but... Uh, yeah, uh, You're in it! I, I, I'm in and around it, but, I mean, it's weird... What does people, it look rough up close? Well, well, <laughs> friends come and see it and they go, it really is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. The, the combination of the light on the set, because the, the shifting light of the of, of the, play, the summer light in it and uh, shifting of the seasons on the, on Ray's set. Because um, they've sort of, it's knocked, they've kind of knocked through, haven't they? They've knocked through, there's a kind of a... a that's what it looks like, but yeah. they haven't. But you, well, it's you, also not, it's not designed for beauty, but, but strangely it creates this sort of air of dilapidated uh, kind of magic. It, 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 it's, I mean, I sort of sit in that chair at the back and I, I could live in that house. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know when you feel like you, you can put a cup down and you wouldn't be kind yeah, of messing yeah, yeah. up someone's lovely design. It's, I mean, it's, and we've also got the outside kind of creeping in onto the stage. You know, a lot of the growth of the, of the wood is coming in and up through the floorboards, which is... Really amazing. It's nice in the theatre. Right? Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not so much in life. <laughs> so in life. You're thinking, oh, hell to heat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, right, let's take a break for uh, some music and then we'll get on to... Because actually we've got loads of questions and it's people... Have, you know, some people have been to see it, some people are going okay, to go see it. So they've got right, questions right, yeah. for you. So uh, this is new to two. It's a girl called Eddie. Uh, someone's going to break your heart. Ooh, there we go. Uh, a girl called Eddie. That's new to two. Somebody's going to break your heart. And my guests are Toby Jones and Rich Domagridge. They are starring in the new adaptation of Anton Chekhov's Uncle Vanya by Conor McPherson. It's directed by Ian Rickson and it's at the Harold Pinter Theatre until May the 2nd. Uh, people, you know, listeners and that, have been in touch. Huh. Uh, here we go. Now, um, I might ask you that question later. Uh, Wendy Dixon, I have been a fan of... Richard Armitage, uh, for 16 years. <laughs> 16 wow. years, it's quite specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Prior to that, not, not so much. much. Yeah, yeah, not interested. Uh, he got good about 16 years ago. <laughs> and I can't wait to see him live on stage in March. Uh, oh, wow, they are a fan. They're coming three times. Wow, thank you. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Toby looks worried. <laughs> I'm not sure I want them there three times. Uh, can you ask them both? Uh, oh, both. Oh, this uh, is good. Uh, they prepare for a long run in the theatre. And are there any superstitions and routines they have before they go on stage? Send them both by love and can't wait to see them in the play. That's from Wendy Dixon. And I suppose, can you prepare for a long run or do you just do it again? I think the pre preparation for a long run is actually everything you do in the rehearsal room because you, you try and put things into the ground or into the you know foundations that you can go back to when you when your brain starts to go into repeat mode so you know you've got your little book of notes or whatever it is you've done you know in the first week and you go back to it and refresh yourself so that's part of the thing isn't it i guess yeah he it's, hates it's, talking about it, it. <laughs> it's 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 hard it's hard to put uh, a long run i mean because you miss the adrenaline you you're sort of nostalgic for the the adrenaline uh so yeah, I, I suppose that's what Richard says is right. You you, you kind of re try and retrieve what all that excitement in yeah. rehearsal and discovery, but it's not it's not easy. And um, 
But some plays, I think, must be easier than others. There's a I lot mean, here. There's a lot here to, to draw on. You know? yeah. yeah. And presumably, this is this. are there many kind of repetitive lines in this or things like that? Where, you know, where you literally are thinking, didn't I say this before? Uh, uh, other characters repeat each other's lines, which is really interesting. So I start saying things that I think, I've heard this before today. Oh, it's because <laughs> Vanya said it in Act yeah. 1. It's the way Connor's done... He's yeah. done lots of kind of mirroring of, of people's lines. That... At the moment, that ask me in March, then it might yeah. be getting really confused. Yeah. <laughs> I saw this wonderful production last weekend, and congratulations on brilliant performances. Uh, Toby was Vanya. Richard was Astrov. Well, was this, oh, this email? Nice. This email can go up on one of the it's swinging boards. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yes, five stars, Christine. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Christine. Thank you. Uh, I'd love to know what stage roles they still have on their <clears> wish lists, and if any of them are in the pipeline. That's from, as I say, from. Christine, uh, what about you, Toby? Uh, no, no, not. Uh, was this was this on your wish list? Uh, it was on my wish wish list. Wish um, list. Yeah, but I only revealed it when I was asked to play it. <laughs> you know, it, and I tend to feel like that about it. You sort of curse things if you sort of articulate what. The, it's a very short list of lists of parts I want to play because one of the things I love about my job is not knowing quite what's what's going to happen in the future. Really. Yeah. What about you? You know, Astroff was definitely on the list. I'd seen it played brilliantly by Mark Strong and I was like oh yeah I wouldn't mind having a crack at that one day um, in, I've always wanted to have a little go at Richard III but but also I'm, when you're in a period piece and a play that's been done a few times my brain goes to what's not been written yet and I, you know, I'd love to do a kind of really piece of new writing you know very minimal. Yeah, come on, Conor McPherson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> come on, Conor. Yeah, on. come on. We, we did the Uncle Vanya for you. Come yeah. on. Come on. Um, as many people can't get to see Uncle Vanya in London, is it going to be filmed for release in cinema? They're going to do one of those things. It's Monica from Bristol. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know whether it would, would necessarily work, would it? I don't know. It'd be they, quite they, hard to I'm do. I'm not sure whether they do it. Uh, Have you ever done one of those yeah, stage yeah, uh, things being adapted? Yeah, I, I did, when I did The Crucible, they filmed it for, for digital theatre and it actually worked really well because we were in the round, so they got multi cameras all everywhere and they had close ups and stuff, but I don't know whether we could do that with Vanya. I mean, it's kind of dependent on the audience as well. The show lives because of the audience, so I don't know. And in a way, it's kind of nice that there's no record, yeah. I always think, that it's yeah. ephemeral and you all remember if it. If you weren't there, all, you yeah. missed it. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard, though, for people who can't. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's expensive to come to London, isn't it? So, it uh, is. Can I just say, this is a real, this is a real question okay. that came in. in Richard, your character Astrov loves planting trees. What's your favourite type of tree? That's from Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> That's who you're talking to. Um, That's your audience. Learn to love them. Can I say round tree? <laughs> What's sure. That? Smarties. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd say maybe a yew tree because they live for thousands of years. Well done for thousands thinking of an answer. Years. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, I'm just asking a stupid question already. Uh, I'm very excited, along with my friends Nina and Donna, to be seeing Richard and Toby in two weeks' time when we come to see Golvania. It's women only, the show. <laughs> apparently, yeah. Yeah. apparently, really women is. Women only. Heartthrobs, I tell you. Uh, Magic Mike and Uncle Vanya, they're, they're really <laughs> the only shows on right now. Uh, my question to Richard would be, Sauls, uh, <laughs> it has been nearly 15 years since what a it has been nearly 15 years since I visited beautiful New Zealand and wondered if Richard had a favourite location or memory of his time there whilst filming The Hobbit. Uh, many thanks. This is from Alice Curtis. We already had a question from Alice Curtis. Alice uh, in New, from New Zealand. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've got. I mean, everywhere. But I was once working with Andy Circus as second unit director, and they dropped us at the top of a mountain, and he flew off and and started filming. Let's, when they didn't have drones, so yeah, yeah. filming with a helicopter, and, and we were just left with a radio, and, and literally on the peak of a mountain where no one had trodden. So I'd say that place was pretty special. That I mean, that's such a privilege, like, an yeah, life changing. Yeah, moment, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, could you please ask Toby Jones? <laughs> Hello. I'm yes. still here. Yes, uh, Neil Robertson from Dorset. Uh, whilst filming one of the best British comics of all time, the, direct, the Detectorists, did he find anything with his metal detector whilst on film breaks? Also, <laughs> also, if the right project came along, would he work with Mackenzie Crook again as their on-screen partnership was fantastic? So did the metal detector, did they work, the metal detectors? Oh, yeah, listen, uh, the reason there is a show called Detectorists is because Mackenzie is a metal detectorist. He, he, he does that anyway, and so and he was directing it and often takes would end and Mackenzie would get a signal 
and the first AD would shout, cut, and Mackenzie would have his headphones on and wouldn't cut because he'd, he'd, <laughs> he'd found something. He'd start digging. And then and they go, and they go we, we've cut Mackenzie in. He'd go, yeah, I'll be with you in a second. And, he'd, uh, and he frequently found things on location, like bits of silver, bullets and stuff like that. And uh, because we were shooting in Suffolk, which is a great place to do metal detecting, uh, he, he found so much stuff, including he's got stuff at the British Museum. I mean... Wow. So... Yeah, I mean, he's the guy to go to about metal detectors. But was yours metal detector switched on? Mine was too good. I couldn't operate it. It was too sophisticated. It, <laughs> it, sort of, it, it not only found things, it told you what you'd found before you dug it out. <laughs> uh, bu- 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 uh, now, Richard, my daughter loves Castlevania. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you record lines for an animated film, how long does it take and do they show you what your character looks like? Jennifer in Barnstable. I'm afraid I am ignorant of Castlevania. Oh, it's a Netflix show based on a on a very famous video game that uh, is doing really rather well. Yeah, the third season starts March 5th. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, yeah, it's very popular. Um, no, uh, with this particular one, we we don't record to any sketch. I mean, they, we just do the, the scenes vocally and then they go away and do all of the animation. So uh, it's quite fun for me to kind of see what, what they've done with it. But yeah. <laughs> play a really cool character. Yeah, he's a complete drunk. Oh, well, hello. With a yeah. whip. That Castlevania? Yeah. And it's on Netflix? Yeah, it's like an adult kind of vampire fantasy. Sounds like prep for it, Astro. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's they look quite similar, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Toby, what inspired you and Tim Crouch to write Don't Forget the Driver, and are you planning to write a second series, Alice in Wolverhampton? Even as we speak, we are writing the second series. We will be shooting it in June. Uh, and it, we were inspired by... Tim grew up in Bognor, and so he said, I want to write it. He was asked to come up with an idea, and he said, would I write it with him uh, and he he was inspired by the coach drivers just hanging around the coaches uh, on Bognor Regis oh, seafront uh, and that's how we came up with the idea and yeah so we, every week we go on a different coach trip and there's a sort of overarching story and I, I play the, the coach driver yeah. and is it uh, sort of more enjoyable writing with someone else well I've never done it on my own I've, I have a, in the theatre but um, I can't imagine because you're sort of acting out all of the scenes all the time, so the idea of doing that on your own, I, I, I can't. I, I love working with Tim. Yeah. Okay, um, Richard. Um, oh, The Stranger. I love that too. Oh, it's really thanks. good. The Stranger on Netflix. <clears throat> uh, for an actor, how significant is it that the whole series is available to watch in one go? Uh, aren't we missing something by not having to wait like we used to? Oh, Julian Rippon. Julian, get um, with the program. You know what? I would have said yes because I'm I'm somebody that likes to be teased with like stuff like that but I think actually oh no you're not <laughs> <laughs> I think Harlan's book is the kind of book that that you just you know that thing where you get to the end of a chapter and you think I'm going to go to sleep now oh, actually I'll watch I'll read another one and it, yeah. it's sort of perfectly designed for that format but but I'm sort of with Julian I have to be honest yeah and now because uh, I've watched all the it can't come back or is it coming back? I would love it to come back, but it's a close story, really. It it's, seemed yeah, quite close. It comes to an end, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. End, end of the world or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. Don't, uh, don't, sorry, don't, don't ruin it for people. Uh, right, uh, we should really uh, shut up because the, we're going to get hit the news in a minute. Okay. So mm. let's just remind everybody that uh, Toby Jones and Richard Armitage are starring in Conor McPherson's new adaptation of Anton Chekhov's Uncle Thania. It's directed by Ian Rickson and it's playing at the Harold Pinter Theatre until May the 2nd. It's been a real joy talking to you. Uh, come back and see us again. Thank, Thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Bye-bye. Cheers.